Thank you, Prime Floor Minister, uh, dear Magdalena. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for the very warm welcome. And indeed, you are so right. We are living through bleak times. Putin's ruthless war still rages in Ukraine. But our union stands very firmly with the brave people of Ukraine, be it with unprecedented sanctions against the aggressor, be it with financial support for Ukraine, but also through deliveries of military equipment and humanitarian support for people in Ukraine, or the fact that the European Union is now catering for four million refugees who had to leave their homes behind. The Ukrainian people deserve our solidarity. That's why I will travel to Kyiv tomorrow. I want to send a very strong message of unwavering support to the Ukrainian people and their brave fight for our common values. The atrocious war has now been going on for over a month. Our common European response to Russia's invasion in Ukraine has been strong. It has been swiftly coordinated and very determined. We have adopted with unprecedented speed indeed four sanctions packages and the fifth is underway as we are speaking here, coordinated with our partners, the United States, uh, the United Kingdom, Canada, overall the, uh, the, we have now more than 40 countries that are aligning with our sanctions and I want to thank you, dear Magdalena, for the ongoing support that we receive from you what the development of sanctions is concerned. But indeed, as you said, the crisis has also shed light on the dependencies the, that we have, and we have absolutely um, to get rid of them. The first one is the dependency on Russian fossil fuels. The European Commission will therefore, in a short time mid-May, present a plan to phase out our dependency on Russian gas, oil, and coal. So it has three components. We have to diversify away from Russia towards reliable partners and suppliers, like, for example, the United States, Canada, or Japan. We have to strengthen our energy efficiency. That's a big topic. There's a lot of room to maneuver for increased energy efficiency and therefore save energy. And we have to invest massively in renewables. And here, of course, I know that I can count on Sweden's active role. As we all can see here, Sweden is a renewable energy pioneer. Renewables are bound to make up half of your country's energy mix by the end of the decade. That's amazing. So we have to learn a lot from you in this green transition. And this is why I'm particularly grateful for this inv invitation here to Exergy. It was fascinating for me to listen to the guided tour and to understand um, how this is a perfect circular uh, approach towards district heating, a pilot project of carbon capture and storage. This is the future that we see right now here with a quantum leap in energy production and, of course, a huge potential not only for Sweden but for the whole of the European Union. I think it's fascinating energy production that absorbs carbon instead of pushing it into the atmosphere and giving a boost to our plans to reach the climate neutrality by 2050. I know that Sweden has a more ambitious goal with 2045. So Exergy has chosen to base its production solely on renewable and recovered energy resources. And I was fascinated to hear that you have the potential to make Stockholm the world's first climate positive capital city. So it's a fantastic and smart business decision. It's good for the planet, but it's also good as a strategic investment in our security of energy supply. In general, it's high time for our continent to build a more robust economy. First, because it has been weakened by two years of pandemic. We should not forget we're just getting out of the pandemic. And also because a strong, cohesive economy and a competitive industry with innovative technologies as we see it here today are invaluable assets in the turbulent world we live in. And this is where next generation EU comes into play. 
It is, as you know, our recovery plan. It's our roadmap for reshaping the continent for decades ahead. We have the European Green Deal as one priority. We have the second priority to digitalize our economies and, of course, the third priority to increase our resilience. Next Generation EU is 800 billion euros focused on these priorities. So I'm very glad that today I can announce that the European Commission has given green light to Sweden's recovery and resilience plan. Let me describe a little bit what's in it. It's an excellent plan. 44% of the plan will support our climate and energy priorities. Investment in electrification, decarbonization of the industry, energy efficiency in residential buildings, for example. And with reforms promoting the increased use of biofuels in the transport sector, also a very important topic. Then you dedicate significant resources to our second goal, the digital transition. You are already very good. So from a high level, you increase the digitalization. You are front runner. 20% of this plan's budget are dedicated to the dig digitalization. You will give a boost to maintain your leadership, of course, in this field. And I'm very glad to see that more than 460 million euros will be invested in the rollout of high-speed broadband throughout the country. And that the plan also includes significant investment in digital skills, smart technology for energy efficiency, and in more efficient and accessible public services. So the Commission's approval opens the way to the disbursement of 3.3 billion euros over the next years. And I have now the pleasure to let you know green light. And the work we've done so far does not end here, but it starts in implementing the plan. Many thanks. Thank you.